Alien 3, probably the most controversial and divisive entry in the Alien franchise. This time around, the spaceship that was carrying Ripley, Hicks, Newt, and Bishop at the end of Aliens turned out to have an alien face hugger on board the whole time. Whoops. I guess they really should have had a better look around before taking off. Where the ship crash lands on an alien planet, which is actually a prison colony full of criminals with shaved heads. Ripley, being the only survivor of the ship, believes that her struggles with the aliens aren't over yet, where a new breed of alien is unleashed which is a dog hybrid, where the colony must try to destroy this alien, only there are no guns or weapons on the planet. And to make matters worse, Ripley discovers that she's also carrying an alien, and must destroy it before the Wayland Company can get their grubby hands on it. In this entry, which has often been described as bleak, downbeat, slow, and just downright morbid and depressing, but when you learn of the insanely troubled production of this movie, you'll discover that the making of Alien 3 was actually more depressing than Alien 3 itself. Ah yes, Alien 3, the entry that looks very brown and orange. Seriously, has anyone else noticed just how brown and orange this movie looks? It's also the movie where Ellen Ripley gets the same haircut as her favourite YouTuber, Minty. But jokes aside, the production of this movie is just insane. And I feel like there could be a movie about making this movie. In fact, it's kind of a miracle that it even got made. So let's explore this madness by checking out 10 things that you didn't know, or probably didn't even want to know for that matter, about Alien 3. Let's check it out. Number 10, the original idea was to have an Alien 3 and 4 back to back. To say that there were many potential Alien 3 ideas being thrown around would be an understatement. This beast of a production went through more scripts than I've had hot dinners. The production company behind the Alien franchise, Brandywine, wanted to do something entirely different when 20th Century Fox approached them for an Alien 3. They wanted to make a sort of Cold War approach. The movie was to be split into two, with the production being both an Alien 3 and 4, and it was to focus more on the Wayland Company and their plans of using the aliens as weapons. The Alien 3 story was to focus on the Corporal Hicks character played by Michael Bean, who was introduced in Aliens. Ellen Ripley was to appear in a cameo scene, but have a larger role in the second part, Alien 4. The two-part movie story was to result in an epic battle involving an army of aliens. And the first movie's director, Ridley Scott, was approached to direct the movies. And he was keen, but couldn't commit due to other commitments. And so just like that, this planned two-part epic alien story was dropped. Because 20th Century Fox had reservations for this particular alien saga. Number 9. Other Potential Alien 3s after the first failed attempt at an Alien 3, cyberpunk writer William Gibson was hired to write a script. His script was very action orientated, where the spaceship we see Ripley, Hicks and Newt and Bishop leave in at the end of Aliens gets picked up by quote, space commies, on a spaceship station which also acts as a shopping mall, a sort of space station shopping mall hybrid, where a face hugger alien turns out to be lurking on the ship, where the space station shopping center ends up getting overrun by aliens. In a story which, like the previous Alien 3 story, was going to have more of a focus on Hicks and the Wayland Company. Finnish director Rennie Harlan was hired as director, thanks to his previous work on A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. But William Gibson ended up leaving the production when he was asked to do rewrites to his script. Then near-dark writer Eric Redd wrote a script. 
Here's one starts off with the space shuttle at the end of Aliens, in which all the occupants have been killed by alien creatures. The story then shifts to a small US town, which turns out to be a town under a biodome in space, which is pretty cool, where the townspeople must battle aliens. But this script was rejected. Then Warlock writer David Toohey was approached to write a script, and his script involved a prison planet, which is conducting illegal and dangerous experiments on the alien species. However, at this time, director Rennie Harlan was getting sick and tired of Alien 3 not moving forward. And so, just like that, he left Alien 3 to go and work on the adventures of Ford Fairlane instead. Number 8. It was decided that we need more Ripley. One thing that most of the previous scripts had in common was that they were actually quite Ripley light. But 20th Century Fox felt that Sigourney Weaver was the main attraction in the Alien franchise. So Weaver was offered $5 million if she would play the lead role yet again rather than a cameo. Plus a percentage in the box office takings, and she also had to approve the story. Which at her insistence would not involve guns whatsoever, and the character of Ripley had to get killed off at the end of the story. So writer David Toohey was asked to add more Ripley to his script. Then British director Vincent Ward was hired as director, thanks to his dramatic movie, Map of the Human Heart. Ward had some of his own ideas of what Alien 3 should be. So he came up with the story of Ripley crash landing on a space monastery. A new writer was brought in to work on these new ideas, to which the current writer David Toohey found out a new script was being written through a journalist's friend, and so he left the production under a dark cloud. And a lot of the ideas that he had created for Alien 3 would be recycled for Pitch Black, which itself started the Riddick film series, but that's for another episode. This new Alien 3 script was being developed and had some interesting ideas, like Ripley landing on a planet made out of wood, occupied by monks, whom haven't been in the presence of a woman for many years, who believe that Ripley arriving there is a test of their temptation, and that the eventual alien that is unleashed is the devil itself. Many people, including Sigourney Weaver herself, really liked this script and found it to be a shame that this version of Alien 3 wasn't made. And as shown in the final film, this script introduced the notion of Ripley sacrificing herself to defeat the alien. However, Brandywine's own producers, David Giller and Walter Hill, then came on board to do rewrites to this script. And at this stage, even they had enough of it. So they hired Highlander and Hunt for Red October writer Larry Ferguson to work on the script some more. And supposedly, not many people in the production liked this new script. With Sigourney Weaver herself claiming that Ripley was written more like a pissed off gym teacher. Number 7. Music Video Director to Troubled Production Healer Brandywine producers Walter Hill and David Giller were pretty much in the later stages of reworking the script into the final film that we got. Director Vincent Ward wasn't happy with the idea that the planet of monks was now turned into a planet of prisoners. And he pleaded with 20th Century Fox to revert the story back to being about monks. So as a result, he was fired. So finally, American music video director David Fincher was brought on board as the director of Alien 3. Prior, he had directed music videos for Madonna, like Express Yourself and Vogue. Fincher took the job and filming had started before there was even a finished script, with all kinds of new and final ideas just being thrown around. An example of this is the production of Alien 3 wanted a new species of alien. They wanted it to be a xenomorph creature that is also a hybrid of an ox. But at the last minute, Fincher felt that it should be a dog, as he also felt that an alien would be better if it had the characteristics of a dog, of which is a smaller animal. This came at the frustration of the production, as the ox scene had already been filmed, and now the scene had to be reshot with a dog. Little annoyances and changes like this were frequently made at the last minute, which is all kind of pretty much down to Alien 3 not having a finished or solid script at the time of filming. Number 6. Character Disposal Outrage One of the most controversial and disappointing aspects of Alien 3 is how the movie starts by killing off a bunch of characters that were introduced in the previous movie, Aliens, without any decent send-off, those characters being Newt, Hicks, and Bishop. 
Aliens director James Cameron had left behind rich and interesting characters for the next director to further use and explore, only to be killed off off screen in Alien 3's opening credits very anticlimactically. This is something that has been the subject of annoyance and condemnation in the series ever since Alien 3's release, and is often used as an example of how not to treat beloved characters in movies. But none were more disappointed than James Cameron himself. He would go on to describe this treatment of characters that he helped create as a slap in the face, and thought that it was a poor move on 20th Century Fox's part. But he maintained that it's not the director David Fincher's fault, and that Fincher had pretty much walked into a hot mess of a movie production. Hicks actor Michael Bean was so appalled of his character's demise, he banned Alien 3's production from making a planned dummy of his likeness, and thus show his character's death on screen, which is why we hardly see it. However, when the actor learned that his likeness was still going to be used, he demanded a fee, and supposedly was paid more for his image being used than his entire fee for starring in Aliens. Yeah, the behind the scenes of this movie is crazy. Yep, well it's a good thing that Hollywood has learnt its lesson to not kill off well-loved characters at the start of sequels. Right? <laughs> right? I blame myself. Number 5. Filming It's no lie that the production of Alien 3 was a troubled one. The budget was constantly ballooning, with a tired and overworked crew as well as director David Fincher being up against producers and higher-ups who kept clashing with his own vision. And on one occasion, he had to secretly shoot a scene with Sigourney Weaver against the studio's will, of which when they found out, they were not happy. As with the previous Alien movies, Alien 3 was filmed in England, namely Pinewood Studios. Cinematographer Jordan Cronenworth had to be replaced two weeks after filming, thanks to issues with Parkinson's disease, so he was replaced with Excalibur cinematographer Alex Thompson. Stan Winston, who made the truly breathtaking alien creature effects for Aliens, was asked to return, but he couldn't because he was too busy at the time, no doubt working on Jurassic Park, so a company called Amalgamated Dynamics was hired, as well as Richard Edlund's Boss Film Studios, which had been making effects for movies ever since Ghostbusters. David Fincher wanted the alien monster this time to look different, to look sleeker and faster. And rather than standing upright, he wanted the creature to be mainly on all fours, resembling more of a puma. Original alien designer H.R. Giger was hired to create new alien designs, this time of a more four-legged alien. And at one stage, the new alien was even designed with lips in an attempt to make it look sexy. <laughs> Once again, the production of this movie was weird, like really weird. To bring the alien alive this time round, a puppet was used that was filmed in front of a blue screen, which would then be inserted into the footage. And I don't know, to me the effects look a little... off. It just doesn't look right and clashes with the footage that it's been inserted into, making the alien this time round look really... well, to be honest, fake. I also felt that the alien in Alien 3 just didn't look menacing, as it looked kind of small. Seriously, is it just me, or was the alien a lot smaller this time around? Especially when compared to how big and epic the Queen Alien was in Aliens. Oh, and as crazy as it sounds, at one stage while filming Alien 3, they even brought in a real dog, namely a Whippet, where they tried to dress it up in an alien costume and film it running around the set. And that could have been our alien creature for the evening. A dog in an alien costume. But yeah, it didn't work out. They brought in the Whippet, but they couldn't whip it good. And if anything, this poor doggo didn't look scary, but more confused. But still, all said and done, the movie did give us this memorable shot. So there is that. Number 4. Tie-In Cartoon Series Alien 3 may be many things, but one thing it is not is a movie aimed at kids. However, someone had the genius idea of releasing an Alien cartoon to coincide with the release of Alien 3. Which is where we get the proposed cartoon, Operation Aliens. Which, despite being planned when Alien 3 was in the works, was actually going to focus more on the previous movie, Aliens, as we join Ripley and the Marines on their battle against the alien xenomorphs. 
the setup and alien designs had to be drastically toned down in order to be more child friendly. This cartoon was supposedly the brainchild of toy company Kenner, who distributed the action figure lineup for the movie Aliens. And Kenner had taken their idea of making an Aliens animated series to Fox Kids, and put together a couple of trailers and a pilot episode, as well as, um, a board game? But ultimately, the planned series went nowhere, and, well, that was the end of Operation Aliens. Number three, alternative ending. Okay, say what you wanna say about Alien 3. I know that I sure have during this episode, but one thing you've gotta commend the movie for was having the guts to kill off Ellen Ripley. I don't know if it's a good move or a bad move, but it is most definitely a brave one, especially considering we've been following this character for three movies now, where we see Ripley hurl herself into a sea of lava, just as the alien that she has been impregnated with bursts out of her chest, as not to let the Whalen company get their hands on it. However, according to co-star Charles Dance, an alternative ending had to be filmed, one in which Ripley didn't die, as it was feared that this ending may be too similar to the ending of Terminator 2 Judgment Day, in which the main hero also sacrifices themselves in hot lava. That, and 20th Century Fox really didn't want to kill off Ripley, but Weaver's contract stipulated that her character must die, so they went with the planned ending. But yeah, that's just an example of how there were constant changes being made throughout the filming, which actually really affected the musical scoring of Alien 3, which was being composed by Elliot Goldenfall, who would actually go on to score Batman Forever. He too struggled with Alien 3's production, thanks to delays, in which he spent over a year working and reworking on the score for Alien 3. In fact, the LA riots were happening at that time and were actually taking place not too far from where Goldenfall was working on the Alien 3 score. In fact, the riots were dangerously close to the lab where Alien 3's negatives were being kept and thus they could have easily have been destroyed, something that actually would have made director David Fincher happy apparently. Goldenfall supposedly used the anger and frustration of the riots to come up with the anger and desperation of his score for Alien 3. Now, about that score, I'm kind of two minds about it. I like the music when it's loud and bombastic, but the score also uses a lot of choir music, and to me it just doesn't go with the Alien universe. But that's just an opinion. To me it sounds a little too somber and depressing. Then again, Alien 3 is somber and depressing, so I guess the score does go with the movie. Number two, Sigourney Weaver had to go bald twice. Okay, so just as the production of Alien 3 couldn't get any more irritating for all involved, Sigourney Weaver had to completely shave her head twice. So here's what happened. Weaver agreed to shave her head for Alien 3, provided she get a pay rise for doing so. And having Ripley lose her hair is a bald move, no pun intended. Where during the production, the movie got the nickname Skinheads in Space. However, after filming her scenes for Alien 3, Weaver started to grow back her hair as she prepared for other film roles. But nothing with Alien 3's production is that easy. As just as Weaver was starting to get her locks back, she was called back to do reshoots for Alien 3, in which she would have to shave her head again, where she supposedly got paid an additional $300,000 for the aggravation of having to shave her head again. Speaking of reshoots and last minute changes, Alien 3 had a really baffling early teaser trailer, which implied that this time the action was going to be taking place on Earth, which got a lot of eager fans excited with the idea that the Xenomorphs are going to be let loose on Earth and all the possibilities that come with that. Sadly, this wasn't the case, and I can only imagine this trailer was put together when one of the earlier scripts were in development, because instead what we got was a slow, bleak, and morbid art house movie, where Ripley is in some dull prison facility and, well, not on Earth. Number 1. In Space No One Can Read The Bad Reviews Alien 3 was released in May 1992, and thanks to its budget, which sat somewhere between 50 to 60 million dollars, there was a lot riding on it being a success, which, to be honest, it was, as it would go on to make nearly 160 million dollars. It opened up at the number two spot in the States, beaten only by Lethal Weapon 3. 
and its initial US release was considered a disappointment, but it made more money overseas, making it the second highest earning Alien movie. However, the critical and fan reaction was bad. Many agreed that the franchise had a sudden drop in quality after the arrival of Alien 3, and that it just didn't have the genuine frills or panache of the first two movies. Over the years, I've seen Alien 3 labelled as many things, including slow, dull, boring, morbid, depressing, and a general disappointment. Even the movie's director David Fincher himself has disowned the movie, and doesn't seem to have any love for it, claiming that no one hates the movie more than himself. But that said, it didn't affect his career, as a few years later he directed the psychological thriller Seven. In order to try and salvage Alien 3 somewhat, an assembly cut was released in 2003, which was intended to improve the movie, with alternative and new footage. 37 minutes of new and unused footage to be precise. So what do I think of Alien 3? Well yeah, look, I don't like trashing on other people's artwork. Especially one as tragic as Alien 3, as it sounds like it was doomed from the start, and was really a difficult movie to make. But whenever I watch it, I just can't get into it, and I've also heard other people say that. The previous two Alien movies had me engaged from the start. This one feels like it's a bit of a slog to sit through, you know, a real effort. I also find it so miserable and morbid. I get that they were going for a serious tone, and the previous movies do have serious moments, but this just feels depressing and unpleasant. I also feel like the movie just looks ugly. Most of the movie has this brown, dusty, orange filter put over the picture, making it not a good looking movie. Once again, unlike the first two movies which did look amazing, and look maybe they were going out for it to look dirty and horrible, and if so, they accomplished it. I put up a post on some of my social medias, asking people what they thought of Alien 3, and one funny response in particular claimed that this person saw it at a movie theatre, but the movie was really bad, and when the projector that was showing the movie broke down, the audience then applauded. But, that said, it'll be an injustice if I didn't mention that a lot of the comments actually really spoke about their love of Alien 3 and that it's just an underrated, misunderstood movie that deserves way more love than it gets. I would say that the replies are really divisive, with a 50-50 split between those who hated it and those who actually had an objective love or appreciation of it. So I'm really glad that some fans did get some love out of Alien 3, and I would never argue with that or try to take that love away from them and, you know, say things like, well, actually, no, if they love it, you go with it, awesome. So to conclude, I don't think Alien 3 is an awful movie. I think it just had too many cooks in the kitchen, with way too many obstacles to overcome. If anything, I think it's a tragic movie that had everything against it. Now, it may not be to my personal taste, but regardless, there still seems to be many people who love it. Alien 3 is an unfortunate movie, that's for sure. Maybe it's because of the fact that the first two movies were so good. And maybe that's why Alien 3 had its issues. Maybe there was a real pressure of having lightning strike three times. And thus, everyone and their pet whippets got involved and had their own ideas as to what Alien 3 should be. And, well, like I already said, there were too many chefs in the kitchen. But either way, Alien 3 will always be an interesting chapter in the history of the franchise. And so with that, I'm Minty. And remember, at one stage, a Whippet was going to play the alien creature in Alien 3. See ya!